Hi guys and welcome back. In this video I will show you everything that's included in the teacher planner. There are some other color options that you can find at the shop so just know that I'm showing you the main color combination in this video but there's a few other options and there's also the option to get the planner undated and another thing this video is already quite long so i did not include the overviews of the widget library and the teacher sticker books that are both included in the teacher bundle so i'm linking those down below if you want to check them out So first I want to say that everything that you see here is either included in the teacher bundle or I have added it using only the pen tool in GoodNotes, like all of these words, you know, my handwriting, this is using the pen tool in GoodNotes and then this text is using the fonts option also in GoodNotes. This is a font, by the way, that you can get at the shop, I'm going to link it down below. So I'm actually going to open this clean copy and let's go to the first page. This is very similar to the Vita Planner in the sense that it's the same format and the main difference will be the weekly spreads but also the extras. This teacher planner includes so many amazing useful extras that I will show you in a second. But so we're here in the first page. I'm going to tell you what these buttons do. All of these here, the bottom two rows are the months. It starts in July so if you tap in the J it's going to go back to July. To go back to that first page you are going to tap on the top spiral here I mean on the top part of the spiral and then you can go to an, a different month okay then this button here the I is your index and that's gonna bring you here where you can label all of your extra sections that you can easily access anywhere in the planner so if I'm in another page these sections are always going to be linked no matter where I am so that's very handy and you can keep here important things that you want to come back to often and if you don't remember the order of you know which tab is which first of all the colors do help you can remember that the light blue could be i don't know a tracker and then this one could be your finances page and so on and so on but if you don't remember exactly and you don't want to label these tabs on every single page of the planner what you can do is just go back to your index and then you will see what each of these tabs is so for example if I'm looking for my finances and I'm just gonna write it right here you can use text or you can just use the pen tool and then write here like finance and then you know that this is the section for finance so this one right and then when you tap on this tab you're gonna get to this spread which is going to be your finance spread all right I'm going back to the very first page this is also the area where you keep your decorations, your widgets, and your planner covers. Let me show you what I did here. So this purple notebook, this is the actual cover that you're gonna get because you also get covers for this bundle. They come saved in a zip folder. You will need to unzip that file before. So let me see if I find them quickly. You can tap here and then choose a folder where you can save your cover. So I have my Vita Planner folder. Here are my covers. So all of these colors are the ones that you're gonna get for this planner, the same as the Vita Planner. So for example, if I want a yellow cover, I just tap there and I have a yellow cover. Now you can place that anywhere you want. Usually I place it, I make it as big as possible on the screen. And then when I exit here and I can see my preview, you will see whatever you placed here. That's why I feel like the covers are important. However, this time I wanted to use some of the widgets included in this bundle and I did like a small part of the screen for my actual cover and then I added this like chalkboard and you know some other decorations and notes. So I'm just showing you what the possibilities are, okay? But let's go to our blank copy here. So that's the first page and if you click on this second button you will go to the exact same thing but right at the end of the planner, okay? So this is the last page of the planner and then you have this area. If you keep swiping left, you will get to this completely blank page because sometimes you just need a white space or a you know blank page, so you have that there. And let me show you what else we have here. So here you have the icons that when your planner is open, you will also see them, so I'm gonna show you those later. Um, let's go, I'm just gonna swipe and then you get to your dashboard. This is some info, um, some links to uh, Printstick social media and such. You can just tap on each of those and something's gonna open like Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, you know, Twitter and Facebook. 
make sure to join um, our Facebook group if you haven't you can just click here click on yes and then it's gonna open the website where you can log into your Facebook account and request to join and please answer the questions because requests with unanswered questions are ignored all right so I'm gonna keep moving and then I get to my index which I showed you already and once again I'm going to explain the top part of my spiral goes to my first page in the planner and the bottom part of my spiral goes to my last page in the planner now if I want to go back to my index I click in the middle here there we go okay and this is where the planner kind of starts once it's open and you have your tabs so the tabs here at the bottom these um, five tabs are the same throughout all of the pages of the open planner all of the pages in the planner have the same tabs but when you go to a month you will see that a ton of other tabs open and that means that these other tabs are specific to July August also has all of its own tabs so if I go to August and test this page is exclusively for August okay the one in July is going to be different even though I also have it but I just wanted to mention that because let me go back we were here at the index my first one here is my favorites or my key page or anything else you want you know that this tab will be available throughout the planner my second tab is my yearly calendar. It's 12 months, runs from July 2019 to June 2020. And then this is a quick overview of what's to come in the year. You have some room for notes, stickers, etc. Your third tab is your, I call it year at a glance. So you have 12 boxes and you can enter, you can put the names of the months up here in each of the boxes. And then you can also um, write the main events, reminders you know exams anything that's going on that month then you know that you can easily access it from anywhere in the planner by tapping on this little eye icon but you can also use this for goals for example I also like in the beginning of the year I use this page or at the end of the year rather where I set my goals for the following year I kind of write them down here I think 12 is a good number so you can also do that so you can get creative and use this as you better want the next page is your notes page and again this is just like space to keep notes or like quick ideas that you have because it's easily accessible throughout the planner so you can just come back here and oh I wrote something down what was it and you can find this quickly. The next page this is an important one because here you have all of the extra spreads which I don't want to take super long but I do need to show you everything that's included so I'm just gonna get started. So first of all, this button brings you back to your dashboard. Just so you know, you can keep stickers here or favorites or notes and that's how you will access it. You would first click on your extras button at the bottom here and then dashboard that's going to bring you here. Next, you have your semester at a glance. So it's kind of like the yearly overview, except that here you have six spaces and you have them separated by um, columns. So you can write like a subject and notes and descriptions. Again, you can use this as you wish. And then let's go back. You have a timetable spread starting Monday through Friday, space for notes and to enter the time. Go back to my extras. You have a schedule page where you can set the time and an activity. Then you have your directory. So here you can keep contacts info. So name, email, phone number, address, and notes. Then you have a accounts page, and this is so useful. So any website that you use for your classes or personal, if you want, you can write down here the name of the website, the username that you're using, the password, and any notes about it, like what is the website for or something like that go back to my extras then you have your birthday so a basic birthday spread where you have room to write the birthdays for each month next you have this groups spread so the idea here is that you write the info for one group in your class on the left side and then another one on the right side if you need more of these um, spreads you can easily duplicate it to do that you will go to your top left here on the four squares this is the page where you're at and this is the page you want to duplicate. So tap on this bottom arrow and then click on duplicate and you have created a page. So now you have one, two of the same, which will give you room for four teams or groups. Okay, and then you have, you know, you can label this team or group, enter a name or a number, then say who forms part of the group and the activities they're going to do. And then you have two empty boxes that you can customize and write whatever you want. 
And now another thing, remember that you can just drag this page and move it anywhere in the planner where it can be more useful. You don't necessarily have to keep it here, just know that. And another thing you can do is click on select, tap on the page, okay, that's gonna check it, and then click on where it says copy up here. Done, and then close this and go somewhere in your planner, let's say I want to go, sorry, to July, and enter my group info after the first week because maybe this week is where the group is relevant so I select my week and that means I just swipe to the location where I want to be click on my squares and then tap on this arrow again but this time click on add page after and then paste page and that will bring a copy of the group spread right here so now I have my week and then I swipe and I have my groups you could also just drag it like I showed you before, but like the groups are like all the way at the bottom here. So to drag it up, all these, you know, dozens of pages is going to be confusing and you might end up doing it wrong. So I also recommend just copying and pasting. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, this classroom page I think is really helpful. So just for this, I will actually open the sticker book, which is right here. So I'm going to go to my sticker book index and then where it says classroom, that's the one we want. So here you have these stickers that match this um, spread here. I'm going to copy all of them just so that I can explain how you can use them. Paste them on my page. I'm going to make them a little bit smaller. Okay. So this sticker here is my chalkboard or this would be the front of the class, let's say. And then all of these four are your student's desk. So your student sits here and this is the desk. That's what it represents. And I gave you four colors so that you can color code. For example, you can separate by groups or you can separate by levels. For example, some classes have different levels. They can go by age, I don't know, anything you want. So I gave you the options here. And the way it would work, I would actually just make this smaller. I'm gonna select it again so I can copy, paste, and this way you will start forming your class arrangement, okay? So you can do rows, for example, you can copy all of these. And you can start deciding how your class is going to be set up. If you don't need these extra desks, just, you know, delete them. And now here, this could work as the teacher's desk or a, you know, table that has a particular purpose. And I use it as a teacher's desk. So for example, I'm going to place it over there. Let me move this a little bit. So this is where the teacher's gonna be. It could be facing the other way, I guess, like this. And then the students are going to be right here, just in rows, why not, okay? And then these two squares are just for you to use however you like. I use them, I would use them for example to mark the entrance to the classroom or the exit. So you can just write here, exit or something like that or emergency exit or, you know, I don't know, the fire staircase, something like that. And that's why you have different colors. So you can choose how to use these rectangles. Okay, so these are the stickers. I'm actually going to delete them now. But I just want to mention that this space on the right side is for you to write what each of these means. For example, we're just using these to describe where each student is going to sit like special attention, I don't know, maybe a student that is struggling with a particular class or subject, then you can, you know, know where that student is going to be placed. Or that's just an idea, but you can separate what each of these means like that. And then here, this blank areas is for you to enter a sticker, a drawing, or I don't know, some initials that you can think of and say here what it means. And then you can use those same initials in your class map. And another thing I wanted to mention, if you are only using one type of desk and you will never use these other stickers, you can just, with your pen tool here and the thickest option that you get, you can just draw over it like so. And again, you could bring in a sticker, bring something like this. It's just an example. You can just place a sticker here and write down what this sticker is going to mean. And then you can keep using the sticker on your um, classroom spread. Okay, I'm gonna bring everything back to the way it was. There we go. So that's what the classroom spread was. I'm going to go now to my grade book. So here you can track grades. The idea is that here you enter which 
period or term the test was for or even the name of the test and here of course you would enter the grade and on the left side here you have them numbered you can enter the name of the student now this page I grew it all the way down here because I had to fit as many students as possible. I made a little poll on the Facebook group and you guys said that some of you had up to, you know, so many students and I kind of figured out that most people would have 35 or less students. So I left space for 38. If ever you need more room, I would just duplicate this page and then just use the second page to enter the remaining students. Another thing, if you have several classes, then I would stick to using this page to just one class. Of course, even if it's, you know, 12 students, just leave this blank. And then a next copy of this spread could be for the second class and so on. Going back to my extras, what else do we have? We have student info. Again, you have room for two students per page on the left side and on the right side. And here I'm going to show you have, you know, name, surname, birthday, nickname. What I would do is um, with a big sign with either text or um, the, the fonts option, I would write down here the name of the students as I know him, Emily, okay? So I can quickly recognize it. And then here I can write down the actual name, the surname, and you do have a space to write the um, nickname. So I don't know, you might call her M, right? But this number, this name, and you can actually make it like a bright color, different colors, just so that you can recognize the name of your student as you're um, going through your pages, because this is only two spaces, you're probably gonna have a ton of these pages for each of the students. And then here you have room to write down their allergies, food needs, personal info, parents info, who the child lives with, and emergency contact information. I've also added this space to write down who's authorized to pick up the, the kid from school, or whether they're taking the bus or not, or any other information you want. You have some notes space down here. And of course, you can use your widget area to add extra information. Going back, you have this behavior tracker, and here, the way it works, again, you have a key area where you can write down for example, in my son's school, they use faces, right? They have like a happy face, sad face, angry face, and then you can write down here what it means. Happy, sad. And here you would write down the name of the student, the date. For example, week of 28 to the third and this would be um i mean depending on the month that you're using this and then you know this is for august or september or any other month and then you can track you know monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday so one week at a time here is where you would enter the same symbol as up there you can copy and paste or you can just write it if it's simple like this you can divide the space and then do like two faces at a time Okay, let's go back. This permissions section can be really useful. I'll show you why in a second. And another thing I want to say, I have a video showing how you can find the exact hex color code of any part of the planner. So I'm gonna link that below. But basically you could erase the stickers in the other classroom spread that I just used my pen and wrote all over it. You could do the same, except that here you don't have the exact color of this, you know, gray right so i'm going to link the video below where you can find the color and then do the same method to get rid of this um word and then you can enter your own word i just wanted to mention that and anyway so let's get to it this one you open it and you get this spread again you get 38 students so here i left some area to write down for example the trip or event for which the child needs a permission slip from the parent okay so here you write down the name of the student and then here on this I, so for information, you click there and then you're gonna go to a page where you have room for two photos. You can enter the photo or screenshot or scanned, you know, document of the letter from the parent. So to go back, I actually added this button so that you can go back straight to this spread instead of going back to your extras and finding the permission spread again. Now, each of these buttons will take you to a spread with two photos. So that means that two students information will be here at once. But what I was going to say is that you can also use this for something else that is not permissions. I don't know if you want to just keep a photo 
of each student just you know to remember their faces or maybe you want to photograph some piece of work that they've done like an art you know well creation something like that you can use this spread for that purpose as well so i really like this one but i'm going to go back then you have your projects page this is the same that you get in the student planner so you can keep track of projects for yourself or for your students now here you have your daily spread, you've probably seen this, the same as the Vida and Student Planners, where you have, you know, hour by hour throughout the day, top priorities, here's a space to write down the date that you're using this for, and breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks, you can enter those, track your water, your exercise, and then here you have space for to-dos or just stickers or more notes. Then you have alternate weekly spreads. You've probably seen these as well. They're the same as in the Vida and Student Planners. They start on Sunday or Monday. And then these four buttons here are your dotted spread, your ruled page. You also get a square grid page, a completely blank page. And we have some more extras here. You have an inventory page where you can keep track of what you have in your classroom, what's missing, what to order. So for example, I write down here, I don't know, pencils. You can write down 10 and then to order. Here you just write down to order and that means that you have to order that amount for that item, okay? Go back, we have a budget page. Again, you've probably seen this. I actually have a full video showing you how to use this page. So I'm gonna link to that in the description below. Then you have your tracker that is pretty straightforward right here you would write down your habit and then these numbers represent each of the days of the month so you can write a check mark or a cross or a dot or anything else you want to track whether you did that or not that day. You have your meal uh, planner so here you just have space to track your water and then a little box uh, for each day to track your meals. Lastly, you have these gray pages, and this is just to use white stickers, which, by the way, there's a freebie coming in the Facebook group that will have white stickers, so you can keep those here, because if you place your white stickers on a white page, you will not be able to see it, so I added this gray page for that. Okay, so that was it for the extras. It's a lot of spreads. I hope that this is helpful for most of you. I gave it a lot of thought. It took me a while to come up with all of these ideas. And I actually took many ideas from you guys. So I appreciate that. Keep them coming. I love hearing what you need and then turning it into a planner. So I hope you like this. And now we start with the months and weeks of the planner. The monthly spreads look exactly the same as the Vita or student planners. You have your full page here for boxes for the month. And these dots on the right represent these weeks, okay? So you have six dots, six weeks. Let's say if I click on the sixth dot, that's going to take me to this week that, as you can see, it's grayed out. So that means that this belongs to the following month, so August, okay? So if I click on this last dot on the right here, I'm going to go to the week that starts in August 5th. So I'm going to do that. And as you can see, it started right here. Once you're in the weeks, you get these words that will take you to the different weeks. I'm sorry, like letters, W, 3, 4, 5. That means August first week, August, you know, second week, third week, and so on. That's going to make navigation a little easier. And then this is where this planner stands out mostly, I would say, because the weekly spread is quite different. Here you have the days of the week on the left side more like a teacher planner. And then on the top, you have the option to write down the subject or a specific thing that you want information for, for that particular day. Normally you would write down here the subjects and then here the class activity that you're gonna be doing. I don't know, you can write down the homework for that particular day. Now, another thing that's very different with this planner is that you only have from Monday through Friday. There's no Saturday and Sunday, but in the widgets included, which remember you can see what's included with those in a separate video that I'm going to link down below. But those widgets include some that say weekend. And the idea is that you use them at the bottom here. So if you do want to write something for Saturday and Sunday. You can still do that. The main page of the planner doesn't have Saturday and Sunday. And then let me explain these tabs that I mentioned before that appeared which if uh, each of the months is 
extra spreads also included but only for this month that we're at at the moment so i'm going to show you what's included you have a dashboard with little spaces to write things just keep track of what's going on here i called it the teacher dashboard then you have your subjects space and here is basically so you write down the subject here you can enter up to eight subjects again if you have more you can just duplicate this page write down the subject here vertically and then some info here or special highlights of what's going on with that subject in that particular month. Then you have your lesson spread. You have up to four subjects. Each row would go for a subject and you can enter notes here or just the subject name and then here detail how the class is going to go. And then you have your objectives uh, page and if you want to go more in that with each of your lessons then here you can write down the topic the lesson class section here you would write down for example which chapter of a book that you're using or if you're following a guide something like that you can specify that here and then the objectives of the lesson what time something is going to happen for example we start at 9 a.m we have a little uh, warm-up exercise for around seven minutes it's pretty exact so you can write 9 a.m you know warm-up exercises and then you can write down 9.07 a.m and then we get into the classroom you know you can be as specific as you want and it's going to be very easy to see how the day is organized then here you can write down the teaching approaches or the techniques you're going to use and then you have some space for notes now let's go to the students tab and then this is a little checklist with room for 19 students so that's the half of the 38 so if you do want to use all 38 then you would have to duplicate this page so you have 38 spaces but here you can track grades attendance you have these boxes at the top here what you would write down what you're tracking for each student then the student name and then here you have room to write either um you know scores numbers just to check if something was done or for example you can write down here a homework that's how i think that this is useful i have worked with very small children and sometimes you ask them to bring i don't know like an empty you know yogurt container and then whoever kid brought it and you can do like a check mark if they have like a wig to bring it then you can start tracking who brought it who hasn't and you know know what's going on with that and let's keep going you have this test page and here you can write down for example the code of the classroom i know that universities and such have like specific codes where i used to work it was something like cl02 and then this could be like history that's the name of the subject maybe and then here the name of the test so semester to final here you can write down the date and whether it was done or not sometimes you know there's no classes for some reason and you have to postpone so that's what this little space is for and this is all blank so that you can decide how to use it best what suits you better all right let's keep going then you have this events tab and really it's to track events or trips the school where i went to had a lot of trips all the time so this is nice to track you have room to write down the place the website of the place the address how much it costs to get into this place the date of when the trip is you know gonna take place and some notes um, you have room for two trips at a time per page and two events as well so here in the events section, you can also enter the date, the event, the name of the event, where it's going to take place, what to prepare, and some notes. Again, you can duplicate the spread as needed. Then you have your call log, and this is, I love it, um, I think very useful. You have room for up to six different calls or contact, you know, events. So here you write down the date, the time when you called, but you also have the option to select how you contacted this person. So it's not exactly just calls. You can also select email, in person, by text or a written note. And then you have this line to write any other method that you used. And then in this bottom space, you can write down if it's a call, you can write down the number or the email address or details about how you met the person and such. Then you can write down notes and the reason of the call as well as the outcome. You can track six at a time and duplicate as needed. Next, you have this schedule page, which again is like extra help or space on how to plan out your weeks. This to-do section, which you've probably seen before, it's um, just, you know, a checklist section with more space to write notes. 
I've included this personal section so that you also have room to write things for yourself, not only school related. So this box to pay, to buy, to clean, and you have some other blank box here, as well as this big area to write things that are, you know, for your life, your beauty routine, things that you're listening to at the moment, books you want to read, things like that. So this is your personal tab. Then you have this weekly spread, which was also included in the original video planner and some people liked it a lot, so I decided to keep it. I labeled this my week so that you can use it, you know, for yourself, your events, what's going on after school, things like that. And you do have a Saturday and Sunday here because, well, this is for your personal private life. And lastly, you have your health and fitness spread. You've probably seen this one before as well. You can track your workouts here Monday through Sunday. You have room to track your water intake and then here how you have slept. The way these uh, boxes work is you can use your pen here to track, for example, I went to bed at, oh my god, last night I went to bed at 3am, which is really bad. Stayed up watching um, series with my mom, I didn't even realize it was that late. But 3am and then I woke up at 8am, so that's not a lot of sleep, that's not good. But anyway, writing it down like this really helps you see, you know, if you have healthy sleeping habits or if you're sleeping a lot or if you're not. You can say like, oh today I feel so tired and you can go back the past few days and see how you slept and maybe that's why you'll see that you're tired because you have barely slept at night. And on the right side, you have room to plan out your meals. This could be, you know, three meals and two snacks or however you want to spread it out. Five per day plus a note section. And this is my last tab for the month of August. So if I swipe left, I'm gonna get to September and then everything's going to start all over. September has its dashboard, subjects page, lessons page, and so on and so on. I think I've mentioned most of what's included in Planner. You also have your tabs. And after the last tab, I just want to show you, you have, well, your notes section that you saw already, all of your extras that I'm going to skip. So I'm going to go to my squares and I want to go, I think my last extra is my gray page, is it? No, this is my last extra. Okay, after this page, if you keep swiping, you get to these uh, spreads that have no tabs, have nothing, just space to write. I've been told that when you're writing multiple pages, you don't want like all these distractions and many things. So you do still have the links that can take you back to your index. And then from here, you can go back to your extras and get to this section. But that's it. There's no tabs, no other buttons. And then you got, you know, this one that's um, dotted. You have it ruled, square grid, and then all blank. Keep swiping and you get to the back of your planner. So this is everything that's included. It took me so long to finish this planner, but I hope you guys like it. Please let me know in a comment if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and tap on the bell to turn on notifications so you know when there's a new video out. See you next time guys. Bye bye.